Good morning, options traders. Well, we've had a lot of discussions with some of the traders asking about some of the high amounts of volumes and open interest on the out of the money options on stocks like Nikola and Tesla, some of the big, big movers these days. And why do so many traders go for the out of the money options? Well, the reason is that the out of the money options are extremely levered. They give you a lot of financial leverage, which just means they give you a lot of magnification. But why is it that they have so much leverage? And that's something that most people don't realize is just how leveraged they are. So first of all, what is financial leverage? Well, financial leverage is gained any time that you have borrowed money. So whether you're buying a house or shares of stock, anything, it's creating a financial leverage. So for instance, let's say that you buy 100 shares at 100 bucks. So that's $10,000 cash. Choice number one is that you pay $10,000 cash. In the brokerage business, your accounting would look like this. You've got a market value long is $10,000. You have no borrowed money, no debit. So your equity is 10,000. You've just fully paid for that position. But now let's say that it rises to $11,000. You still have no debit. Your equity is 11,000. So if the stock value rises from 10,000 to 11,000, that is a 10% gain. But look what it did for your equity. It also increased from 10 to 11,000, so it's also a 10% gain. So do you see how these are a mirror image of each other? It's exactly the same percentage, and that would be true whether the market value went up or down. That's what it looks like when you have no borrowed money. There's no financial leverage. You're just increasing or decreasing at the same rate of the underlying asset. And the reason should be obvious. That's what you own. There's no borrowing of money. But now let's say that you buy stock on margin. We'll say that you still buy the 100 shares at 100 bucks a share, but now you only pay $5,000 cash, which you're allowed to do in a margin account. So now your account looks like this. Market value long is still 10,000. You purchased $10,000 worth of stock, but you borrowed $5,000 to do it. So the borrowed money is the debit, 5,000, and your equity is 5,000. So right now, all of your equity is coming from the $5,000 that you put into the trade. So as before, let's assume that this value goes from 10,000 to 11,000. But look what happens. Your market value is 11,000, your debit is still 5,000, your equity has increased to 6,000. So look at the percentages now. The position has increased from 10,000 to 11. That again is that 10% increase. But your equity has increased 20%. It's magnified. And that's because of the financial leverage. It just changes these percentages here. So the financial leverage is always a reflection of just how much you're borrowing. So because you've borrowed 50% here, you get two to one leverage. And that's why you have twice as big of a return. If you had instead put $2,500 down or a fourth of it, you would have four times the leverage. And this 10% gain would be a 40% increase in your equity. If you could put 10% down, it would be a tenfold increase. And this 10% increase in the underlying would make a 100% change in your equity. So that's where the financial leverage is coming from. So call options provide leverage. And depending on which strike, they provide more and more potential leverage. So to see why, let's say that the stock is 100, and that's one choice. We could buy the stock, or we could buy the $100 call. By purchasing the $100 call, you are mathematically borrowing that $100 strike. And that's kind of an interesting thing about options. It's not a physical loan, like you're actually going to a bank and borrowing money. But in a way you are. It's a mathematical type of borrowing. So take a look at the timeline here. Let's say that if you buy stock today, you would have to spend $10,000 today. But if instead you bought the $100 call, you would pay a small fraction of that, but you've locked in your purchase price. See, the stock trader pays $100 today, but the call option trader locks in the 100 but doesn't pay for that. 
doesn't pay for the full amount of those shares. But let's say one year later, if the call buyer back here wishes to exercise, sure, he could do it then and pay the $10,000 in a year rather than back here. So that's why there is a kind of an implied borrowing going on with call options. And that's where the leverage is coming from. Now, the second thing to understand is that call options are insured shares of stock. A lot of you know, and I've talked about this in previous videos with synthetics. A call option is mathematically the same thing as long shares of stock plus a put. So it's like you have an insurance policy attached to the call. So if you buy a call option, let's say our $100 call that we looked at, this is your risk graph. So with a call option, we get this hockey stick shaped graph, but notice that we get this bend right here at the strike and it flattens out. See, we can only take a loss of so much, which is the amount that we paid for the call. But you don't get that with shares of stock. If you had instead purchased the shares of stock, you could take the full ride all the way down to zero. So you see how this blue line kind of angles off here. This is the insurance value of that call option coming to the rescue. So once you understand that options are a form of borrowing money and they are also a form of insurance, now you can see why the out of the money options are so highly levered. Because what it turns out is that you are borrowing more than the stock's value. Think about that. We saw the power of, you know, if you could pay 50% or 25% or 10% and you're borrowing the rest. Well, when you're buying out of the money options, you're actually borrowing more than the stock's value. And you're actually borrowing part of the insurance value. So take a look. Here's a pricing model and I've got the stock at 100. We're gonna look at the 120 call, so 20 points out of the money. One year to expiration, interest rates of 5%. I know that's nowhere near where they are now, but I'm doing it just to make the numbers easy. And I'm going to choose this volatility of 27.91 and I've done that just to give us some nice round figures to work with. It gives us a $6 call and a $22 put. So the thing to realize is that by purchasing this strike, you are mathematically borrowing $120. But remember, that's not borrowing $120 today, it's borrowing $120 one year from now. You get to float that. So mathematically, we have to actually do what's called taking the present value of this. So it's easy, we're gonna take that 120 strike divided by one plus the interest rate equals eh, just a touch over 114. So let's say that you're actually borrowing $114 today. Mathematically, that's what you're doing by purchasing the 120 strike. Okay, so to be clear, you're not really borrowing money, but mathematically you are. So think about this. If you have $114 today that you're borrowing and you owe 120 in a year, there is the $6 difference. That's where that $6 is coming from. But let's look at it another way. Let's say that you actually borrowed the 114 and you went out and wanted to do the stock plus put combination. Well, with $114 in your pocket, look at this you could fully pay for that $100 stock and you'd still have $14 left over. What will you do with the 14 bucks? Come over here and put a very big down payment on this put. So that's the insight to see, that's the trick, is that when you're buying out of the money call options, you are borrowing more than enough money to fully pay for the stock and to put a pretty good chunk down on the insurance value of that put. Now, I don't want any of the new traders out there to think that I'm saying that out of the money options are the way to go or that they're better. As I've always said, options are tools and it depends on what you're trying to do. Sometimes we're, we might want to use the in the monies or the at the monies. But when you're looking for fast, aggressive moves, the out of the money options can be a really powerful tool. But again, most traders don't see why. And the reason is, is that they are incredibly highly levered. And for anyone who'd like to learn more about the art and science of options trading, please check out the Alpha Trader course and Strategy Lab at optionsa2z.com. Also, please join us on the Facebook trading group, Options A to Z, 
and you can find a link in the description below.